The reason why we go back to old habits is because our goals are too lofty. We're not achieving our goals fast enough. So what happens is, you know what? Oh man, I'm, we're very impatient nowadays. For me, it was good. I didn't have a phone. I was, I was, I was out of this world by myself. It was a race against David Goggins. It wasn't a race against, God, I want to look good for this person or that person. It was me. I got to change myself. So for me, if I lost five pounds in a week, I got a feeling. I allowed myself to feel proud of that. I didn't look at I got to lose 106 pounds. I'm like, man, I went from 297. Now I'm 292. In one week, man, I'm, I'm killing it. We don't. We're not proud of ourselves for the small accomplishments. What we need is we need this monstrosity of the thing to happen and say, ah, I did it. Nah, there's a process that you have to go through and patience is the process. And if we don't have patience after a week, I haven't lost 30 pounds and I'm done. I'm over it. So that's why I found out with people, man. They're not patient enough to realize and to enjoy the moment, not live in it, just enjoy it. There's no finish line in life, but enjoy that moment. Roger that, man, I lost five. Let me go 10 next week. So that's the whole thing about it. That's how people lose it. Our mind wants to protect us. The mind is like, honestly, it has a tactical advantage over us. It knows our deepest, darkest fears or insecurities. It knows where we start to feel, uh, we start getting that doubt creeping. It says, hey man, you know what, man? Maybe this isn't good. Let's go back home to the wife. Let's go back home to the kids. This is not comfortable. So in that moment, the mind directs us. It's a protective mechanism. It saves us for doing bodily harm or, or it really saves us from discovering that the mind's like, I want to be in charge of you. I don't want you to be in charge of me. So it tells you, let's just stop right here. But once you start breaking through that barrier and start breaking down that governor, the governor that you've put in your mind, because we forget we are in control of our mind. We believe it's the other way around. No, we put in our minds what we should do, but we believe our mind is telling us, it's, it's giving us all this feedback. We have to reprogram it and tell us, no, 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 we're good. We're good, we got, it's, this sucks, but it's okay. A lot of us don't know of a whole nother world that exists. It's on the other side of suffering. Once you break these barriers that you have made for yourself, like the mind is the most powerful thing in the world. It is so amazing that I used to be a 300 pound guy and I thought that was it. Could barely read, could do anything. And now that what was inside that person was this guy that's in front of you today. That's how scary the mind is. And that's what I started realizing through this journey is that once I got a taste of, wow, man, I haven't even cracked. I haven't even begun to crack what the mind is capable of. And what I started realizing is on the other end of suffering, that's the real growth of life. Because you realize how the mind processes shit. And I talk about another thing called theory and practice. A lot of people are theorists. They, these smart guys that read these fucking books and shit, man, and they sit down and they tell you what the mind is supposed to do. And a lot of us listen to that shit. It becomes like, this is it, man. This, this old man who has been studying the mind forever, this is the cap that we have. By being a practitioner, I went out and realized a lot of these guys are so wrong, man. The mind has capabilities that are so unknown. And I found that through suffering. And there's a whole other world on the other end of that.